Ladies and gentlemen, I managed to test Farseer Restoration Shaman on the War Within beta and I must say, it actually feels quite good to play in dungeons. In fact, it actually felt even better than Totemic at some points, but that's a topic for a different video. In this one, I'm just going to focus on how the Farseer hero talents affect the gameplay. The whole tree revolves around summoning ancestrals to help you heal and you do that by using the Unleash Life spell. As you know, that's a talent that we don't run in dungeons, so I was very reluctant to do so, but in order to test this, I had to drop my undulation and pick Unleash Wife. And I must say, it didn't actually feel bad at all. In fact, I'm a heavy chain heal caster, so I didn't get much value from undulation anyway, so from that perspective, it didn't feel like I'm losing a lot to have the ancestors. However, I will say that this is adding a new button that you have to press in Mythic Plus, which adds to the bloat of skills that you have to use, and that was something that hero talents were supposed to avoid. And that's probably the biggest criticism that I have of this, but once you get used to it, it's actually quite good to use Unleash Wife and summon the ancestors because that's on-demand healing that you get whenever you need it. The cooldown of Unleash Life is only 15 seconds, so you can basically summon the ancestors every time you need a little bit of extra help to heal. And once you summon them, you have a small window of a few seconds that you can use to pump some heals out to your party. The healing that the ancestors do is actually quite significant. I didn't have meters in that run, but I saw some logs after that. And after Chain Heal and Riptide, the ancestor healing is actually competing with everything else for the third spot. And yes, tuning can change everything, but right now it feels really good to play with them. Not everything felt good though, you have a talent called Elemental Reverb which adds a charge to Lava Burst and Riptide. That makes it so you now you have 3 Riptides and 3 Lava Bursts and that actually feels a bit weird. Most of the time you're just sitting on those stacks and you're not utilizing them. Yes, there are situations where it's actually nice if you're setting Primordial Wave having 3 Riptides is actually good. If a boss fight starts, you can just spam Lava Burst at the beginning and do some single target damage. But overall, those are more like a niche situations and they don't happen that often. So most of the time, as I said, you're just sitting on those stacks and you're not using them. So I thought, fine, we have this talent. Let's go to the Shaman talent tree and remove the Echo of the Elements talent, which gives you an extra Riptide and Lava Burst charge. So you have an extra talent point that you can spend there. Yeah, that's a good plan, but it actually doesn't work in dungeons because if you do that, you have no way to get Earth and Harmony and Ascendance, which you definitely won't take. This could actually work in a raid where you actually take mana tide, but you have to spend extra talent point for the talent below that to get earth and harmony. So overall, it's just a big hassle. Having three stacks is also not going to be beneficial in raid because there you keep that spell on cooldown. So you're not going to be casting more riptides and overall that note is just a wasted talent as it stands. Unfortunately, that means that this note either has to be reworked or if there was a good way to drop the echo of the element so you don't hurt your whole shaman talent tree, then that could be a viable option, but this would require a rework of the whole entire talent shaman tree, which uh, yeah, it's probably not happening. Now this next one is probably a bug, but boy does it feel good. The last Farseer talent note is called Ancestral Swiftness and as the text says, it's supposedly going to replace the Nature Swiftness. And then on top of making your next spell instacast, it also buffs it a little bit and it's going to summon another Ancestor. However, the way that it works right now is that it doesn't replace Nature Swiftness, you get both spells and they do not share cooldown. So you can use both separately, which feels really nice and even if they didn't summon Ancestor, Probably that's a bug that's getting fixed, but I figured I can mention it here because it feels really nice to have those two buttons, even if it's an extra keybind. And who knows, maybe this bug is going to lead to something good, maybe you can have just two charges of Nature Swiftness and have the same button and keybind, probably too much to ask for, but it is what it is. 
There was one more thing that didn't feel nice and that was actually summoning ancestors and just wasting them by doing no healing. In a dungeon that actually happens a lot because we use our nature swiftness to summon healing rain so we don't have to cast it, that summons an ancestor but then at this point there's nothing to heal you're just doing damage so the ancestor just expires without doing anything. You also have a hero talent called routine communication which gives Riptide a chance to proc an ancestor. I actually tried it out in a dungeon and the same thing happens, sometimes you press your Riptide, your ancestor procs but there is nothing to heal after that so it just expires. At least that hero talent is a node so you can actually pick the other talent which increases the duration of the ancestors by 2 seconds and that's probably gonna be the go to otherwise you have to deal with the RNG of randomly summoning an ancestor. Yet again if we ask for them to do a little bit of damage if you're casting damaging spells that's probably going too far and they're never going to agree on this. But then they should at least implement something of the sort if you summon an ancestor and it never heals because you're casting damaging spells and it expires maybe you get like a small buff or something like this. So it doesn't feel like the ancestor was completely wasted. One more extremely fun interaction should be mentioned here, you have a hero talent called Primordial Capacity which not only increases your mana but it also allows Tidal Waves to stack up to 4 times. That actually happens quite easily especially when you have 3 Riptides available instead of 2. And this is actually huge for the tier set that we're going to have for season 1 in the War Within as Tidal Waves itself is going to be more effective and the spells that we cast under it are going to be more powerful. Not to mention the mana reduction cost. So this plays very strongly towards the Farseer hero talents. Although it's not all roses, the cast time of Chain Heal for example gets so low along with all the other talents that reduce it that I was actually managing to get my Chain Heals down to 0.4 seconds cast and then I just have to wait for my GCD to come off cooldown as well. But regardless having 4 stacks of Tidal Waves allows you to be a Chain Heal machine gun even more so than before. And again considering the 4 piece tier set bonus that might be the go to hero talents for season 1 as all these synergies might simply outperform the Totemic Restoration Shaman. Let's quickly mention few of the other talents that are actually quite nice to play with although they don't have such a huge impact. Maelstrom Supremacy further increases the effectiveness of your main healing spells and Earthen Communion adds charges and healing to Earth Shield, both of these are pretty nice to have. Spirit Walker's momentum is also quite nice as it increases the duration of your Spirit Walker's grace, you'll definitely be casting when you use that spell. And Final Calling gives Absorb Shields to nearby party members once the Ancestors expire and that basically happens all the time. All these nodes complement the spec quite nicely so basically they're all small wins. At the end let's briefly talk about Farseer Restoration Shaman rating as well, I think that's going to be even better. As first you're already using Unleash Life in raids anyway so that's not going to be a problem to pick as in Mythic Plus Dungeons and then next you're already trying to maximize the use of that spell in the raid anyway, you're also not using your nature swiftness to do damage there and there are much less occasions where you don't do healing so wasting ancestors there should not be a problem at all. You'll be able to do insane amounts of healing with them, min maxing your tidal waves and combining your ancestors with a chain heal machine gun spamming. So overall I think that the Farseer Restoration Shaman is going to be supreme in raid environment. It's early days but so far I have been very pleasantly surprised by the Farseer hero talents as it feels nice to play with them even in dungeons. And I'm looking forward to playing more with them hopefully with the minor issues that I mentioned getting fixed before the release. Make sure to subscribe to this channel as I'll be doing reviews to the rest of the healing hero talents with Totemic Restoration Shaman coming up next. Thank you very much for watching, now get out of here.